Hi Taurus, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot. Welcome to your mid-month love reading for September. So I was guided to do these love readings uh, specifically to focus on a significant relationship in your life. Now, yes, it's a love reading. However, it can apply to platonic relationships, friendships, coworkers, bosses, siblings, whatever it is in your life. Um, there's a lot going on in the sky right now, which is causing a lot of uh, a heavy emphasis on our relationships and partnerships. Uh, we still have Mars retrograde, you know, it's, it's still in the beginning of retrograde and it's digging its heels into that square with Saturn. So this is all that frustrating energy you're experiencing. It's like the need to start something fresh, to get something going, um, gain perspective or, you know, get an answer. It's looking for clarity and Saturn is doing a pushback. It's causing delays. It's causing things to kind of fall apart, things to not go the way that you were hoping they would go. Saturn's kind of testing our commitment, making sure that our foundations are solid right now before we can move forward. Um, it's probably a good idea to keep that in perspective because it'll help you to not beat yourself up too much for the things that aren't getting done right now or things that aren't going your way. Uh, we have um, a beautiful new moon in Virgo. This is trining your energy. So this is a powerful time for you. Um, the new moon can represent deep healing. It could represent getting things in order. It will bring in clarity. It will give you the direction that you're looking for. Um, Virgo is a really renewing energy. So if there's things in your life that you want to clean up or improve, and it's a really practical energy. So it kind of gives us the insight to, you know, like that one step at a time, crossing things off the to-do list, that self-satisfying kind of energy. Um, also keep in mind though, that the lower energy of Virgo can be really self-critical. And that's why, again, I bring up that energy of beating yourself up for things that aren't going your way, for things that, you know, when all these planets are in retrograde, we're kind of still reviewing past experiences in our life, recent experiences, old childhood wounds, whatever it is. Um, as Mars is in Aries, it's kind of electrifying Chiron in there as well. So um, it's putting a little bit of emphasis on those wounds. It's kind of showing that shadow side, like the, the things that are kind of still there that spirit wants you to really work through so that the things that you are about to begin start with a really solid foundation. We have Venus in Leo, which is kind of this energy of our heart's desire. Things can be very emotional. We could feel, you know, be really inclined to go after the things that we want and the things that we love. Um, it could be a time where we want to be social, hang out with our children. Leo also rules children. Um, it's a really nice energy. However, it's making a square to Uranus right now. Uh, this could bring in an energy of tension because things need to feel free. If there's any areas in your life that you're feeling suffocated, things that you feel you need to, um, you know, Uranus is kind of revolutionary. So whatever we want to shake up, there's probably at least one or two facets of your life where you're just tired of doing the same old thing. And um, this energy will break you free of that. Um, it could do a lot with relationships. If you have a strong foundation, you're probably fine. But relationships that are teetering, relationships that are toxic, relationships that are holding us back from our individual growth, um, may suffer. They may need to be sacrificed. So in the long term, you'll look back at this time and be grateful for it. However, the current conditions and all of this stuff happening, um, further making us feel like we're really not in control of our life at all. Um, these kind of themes can really continue to dig in throughout September. 
So it's important to focus on that Virgo new moon. Um, focus on the things that you can control, the things that you can change, the places in your life where you can bring clarity, communicate lovingly, bring healing into your relationship with others. So in this reading, I'm going to pull Taurus's energy on the left, um, the person you're connecting to on the right, and I'll pull cards for the energy in between you. Um, this energy can come in vice versa. So if you're resonating more with the other side or if you're a cross watcher um, and their side is more of your energy, please feel free to apply it how it fits. If it doesn't fit, don't make it. Um, these are very general readings. I'm reading to what spirit wants me to address at this time. So if it doesn't resonate with you, please come back and check your other signs. I do recommend that you listen to your Venus and your moon placements in your chart for a better idea of love and relationships. All right, Taurus, let's get started with your cards. Hierophant in reverse. The Tower card and the Queen of Wands. Six of Swords. Ace of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. Nice. Two of Cups in reverse. Four of Pentacles. And the moon card. Okay, bottom of the deck, we have the seven of swords. Okay, not a great energy to start with. The seven of swords energy is that of deceit, deception, um, betrayal of some sort. Oftentimes, seven of swords is kind of this self-sabotaging energy where um, we convince ourselves, we, we go at things logically in our mind and we twist things and um, our mind can get the best of us. And so oftentimes when I see that card, it is not always representative of the other person being deceitful or lying or stealing. It can be at times, um, but oftentimes it's kind of where you allow your mind to bring in negative aspects um, that affects things. So your energy is that of the Hierophant in reverse. My Hierophant is my commitment card, whether it's a commitment in a relationship or a commitment to yourself. Uh, when I see it in reverse, it is a lack of understanding your higher purpose, okay? Not being um, in your um, best energy, you know? Not committed to your growth not listening to your higher self, not following your instincts. It could show um, a bit of nonconformity, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, if oftentimes you are find yourself in a position where you have to be a certain way for certain people, um, maybe this is a time when you're actually, you know, bucking tradition in some way. If you come from a religious family or religious background, maybe you're dealing with somebody who is of a different ethnicity, um, a different lifestyle or different, um, you know, just differences in the, in the way that you grow up and in how you, are, who you are, the fundamentals of who you are. Now your person is coming out as the Queen of Wands. This is a very beautiful and attractive energy. If this is the way that you're feeling about this person, there is certainly an attraction. If this person, um, if this represents their energy, they're extremely magnetic and attractive to you. Also a nice mature element of control. The Queen of Wands does not go after she does not do the pursuing. She is never the one to, um, you know, make things happen. She is very creative and she brings the people that she needs to her. 
simply by being who she is, simply by manifesting, simply by following her tuition. The Queen of Wands does not have to do a lot of work, okay? So she could be in a creative field. She could, um, you know, this is not somebody that you would find doing a lot of physical labor, you know. Um, in the middle, the energy between you two is that of the tower. So there is change. When I see the tower with the Hierophant in reverse, it could represent a breakup or an ending that occurred within a relationship. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about a long-term relationship here when I'm referring to the Hierophant. Now underneath the Hierophant is the Six of Swords. Because the Hierophant is reversed with that Six of Swords and the Two of Cups in reverse, which shows up underneath, this is an energy of, it, it could represent distance. Now you could be at an emotional distance with this person. Um, I do pick up an element because you are kind of moving in this upwards direction towards this Queen of Wands that um, you're hoping to return to the situation. They're coming out as the King of Pentacles. This is the card of Taurus energy, um, fixed energy. And I say fixed as in stubborn because that's the first thing I'm seeing here is this stubborn energy. Um, the King of Pentacles can be somewhat intimidating. And here's the reason why. It's a very mature energy and it does not need nor want from anyone, right? Um, the King of Pentacles is definitely always in control. Um, so there's an element here of this person not only being in control, but maybe even intimidating you. And it and it could, it's a very slow moving energy as well. But it is a card of commitment and it does represent loyalty and it does represent a solid union. Now, I like this energy because I like the mix between the Queen of Wands and the King of Pentacles because it's passion with long-term potential. It is a balance of the masculine and the feminine energy within themselves. So I really like the energy that's coming out here. The Ace of Pentacles in the center is a new beginning, a new start, a new foundation underneath the Tower card, meaning um, I think there are, is communication or something that happens in order to clear out any blockages to start something new. Maybe it represents one or the both of you because it's coming out in the center, having to have kind of broken up or ended something or faced a fear of some sort. The tower is always that thing that we're dreading happening that happens. And as soon as it happens, we realize how we really feel about the situation. If you do something to end a relationship and then that tower card comes and you're like, shit, that was the one that um, I didn't want to lose that. You know, sometimes a tower can can show up in that way. Um, I don't like the two of cups in reverse, and I'm going to pull some cards to clarify this. But the two of cups is not being in balance. Um, it's a connection that you don't have right now. You're maybe not in communication at this point. The moon card showing up underneath the king of pentacles may um, indicate that this person is not going to wear their heart on their sleeve. Maybe there's an indication that you won't really know how they feel or what their emotions are. You know, it's a very stoic energy.
All right, let's pull some clarifiers on these cards to dig a little deeper. I'm sorry, I didn't go over this middle card here. Um, in the center bottom row, you have the four of pentacles and it's holding on, that's holding on. So either the two of you are still holding on to this relationship and this connection, or there's more of that stubborn fixed energy um, holding on, not showing your emotions, not communicating at this time. When we clarify, I'll be able to tell you more. Let's take a look at this, this Hierophant card in reverse. Why is this in reverse? Okay, that is clarified by the Four of Swords and the Hanged Man. So there's an element of needing to rest or recover with this Hierophant card. Sometimes he can represent health matters, health issues. Um, maybe there was a time out in a relationship um, due to somebody needing to recover in some way. The hanged man is the energy of a change of perspective. And I think what happens is during the break, during the rest, whatever this commitment was, a break and commitment, a breakup, and definitely, um, that hanged man is a change of perspective. Needing to see things from a different perspective, needing to see things from the other person's point of view, I often see that as. Could also represent inability to make a decision, um, which can oftentimes when we're in an energy of stagnant, not willing to make a move, letting time pass, it could often feel like a rejection for the other person. Let's take a look at this Queen of Wands energy. Five of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Yeah, so the Five of Cups is an energy of regret. It's a, it's, it's a very sad emotional energy focusing on a loss and the ace of swords represents new communication so maybe you are wanting to communicate with this queen of wands and in doing so it may uncover re-trigger some hurts some wounds it, i'm just getting a sense of it it may not be an easy conversation Five of Wands is always indicative of a need for forgiveness of some sort, forgiving yourself, forgiving other people. Um, my fives are always a little bit of drama, right? Um, people might overreact to things, take things a little too personally. The Tower card is a Ten of Pentacles in reverse and the Seven of Swords in reverse. Okay, so um, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse coming out on your side of the energy is that of loss, losing the one thing that you really wanted, the one thing that you really valued. Uh, Ten of Pentacles is kind of like the ultimate goal, the ultimate happiness, the ultimate foundation, that rock solid relationship um, and the seven of swords in reverse coming out on this person's energy is um, it's actually an energy of coming out of this deception coming out of something that was self-sabotaging so maybe there's an element of healing occurring here with the seven of swords in reverse Let's take a look at the Six of Swords.
Yep. So six of swords comes out next to the six of cups in reverse. Sixes are always divine cards. Um, kind of, it's a soulmate energy. The six of cups is a soulmate energy. It could be somebody from your past, somebody you've had past life experiences with, but it really represents like that true love, that um, real tender, beautiful, best friend, um, soulmate kind of energy. It represents loyalty as well. So that being in reverse, there's a couple different scenarios here. The Six of Cups in reverse can be um, somebody coming back from your past. Maybe you like I said, you broke up with this person and now you want to reappear, reappear or come back. Ace of Pentacles make an offer um, to get back together to reaffirm the commitment, okay? Six of Cups also talks to me about loyalty. So maybe there's a sense, and this may not be for everybody, where um, you stepped out of a marriage or you ended a marriage or a relationship, a long-term commitment, and you are moving to somebody else. Um, there's already some, and this came up for somebody else. It was like moving from one relationship directly into another. And it was kind of a heartbreaking situation because... Um, yeah, this definitely isn't for everybody though. But the Six of Cups in reverse is feeling the loss of the soulmate and wanting to come back. That's really what I'm picking up on. Let's take a look at this King of Pentacles energy. High Priestess and the Empress. Wow. Wow. So there's a lot of fire over here in this energy. I mean, it's like practical because it comes out with the Ace of Pentacles. But there's also like this fiery intuition coming out for them. Um, the High Priestess is also where the Divine is kind of working on things. And the Empress can represent fertility. Uh, King of Pentacles can also represent A commitment um, so the high priestess it, it could mean secrets it, it could represent um, maybe hmm. maybe you want to go back to this person and you find out that they are committed and even possibly pregnant with that empress. It could also represent their higher self knowing that this situation is what they want to commit to and have children with. You know, I mean, it, it could really go either way. Let's take a look and clarify the rest of the cards. Picking up on a couple storylines here. Now, you would know. I mean, you would know if that was you. If you reach out to this person and it turns out that they're getting married and having babies, um, yeah, that sucks. That sucks. And then the high priestess is there to just say that, you know, there's a higher purpose for it all. There's a higher reason. There's something bigger that's meant for you. And she always represents keeping the faith. And the hierophant can represent not having faith. Let's take a look at this Ace of Pentacles. We have a Two of Wands, so, and the Two of Cups. See, I don't think so. I mean, maybe for like a couple of you, it's a storyline where you go back and this person's actually committed and having a child with somebody else. I really think it's a first case scenario that this person is very in tune. Um, the Divine is working with them. Maybe they're having dreams or premonitions maybe there's even some conversations telepathically between you two i know that sounds crazy but it really does happen now the two of wands is you wanting to go for this but it could also represent waiting okay and the the ace of pentacles any pentacle energy is slow moving 
but it's a promise and their energy is that of a two of cups right side up so there is definitely deep love here um, absolutely deep love coming from this person it's a really beautiful kind of very feminine energy over here so i like to see that a lot let's take a look why is the two of cups in reverse <laughs> All right. You may be hesitating. That two of pentacles, you may be really hesitating. The knight of cups, two of cups in reverse, and the two of pentacles, you're hesitating making the offer for the reunion. Um, second guessing yourself. Let's take a look at this moon card here. The sun and the star. The connection is this person's happiness. It will make them so happy to hear from you. So happy to um, reconnect with you. And the star represents healing. I'm both of you. Um, but I think, I think there's a deep wound in this person. Maybe a, a misunderstanding. And, uh, and I think that's what that Seven of Swords is. It's all the worst case scenarios. Maybe they're really unclear on how it ended. Maybe it kind of just blew up. Maybe they didn't understand and they're very confused, which is leaving them to really, there's like a deep hurt there. And I think when you come back to the situation and talk about it, it could bring a lot of healing for this person as well. Okay, so this Four of Pentacles holding on Seven of Wands, which is kind of like my, you know, you need to follow your intuition. You need to follow your gut instinct. What is your gut telling you? I think you're trying to go at this logically in your head. You know, if you're writing a list of should I or shouldn't I, um, you know, it, it, you, you kind of just got to go with your instinct. Four of Pentacles is an indication that you're moving too slow. And the Page of Pentacles is an offer, an apology, um, an admission of love, uh, you know. It's an offer. It's a love offer. This Seven of Pentacles, I mean, the Seven of Swords, the overall energy... <laughs> Directly underneath that is the Emperor and the Four of Cups in reverse with the Knight of Swords. Just go for it. Just go for it. Don't hesitate. Contact this person. Work it out. There will be healing. And I can't promise you for every single one of you that you guys are going to get back together immediately and everything's going to come out rainbows. And most likely uh, with the Mars retrograde, it could be heated arguments. It, it could be a tough situation. It, it might take a lot of work to regain the trust between you two. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And I really do believe, you know, the moon card underneath their energy probably represents your doubts and fears, your fear of them rejecting you, your fear of them not wanting you. Um, the sun is always indicative of a reading of it's a yes. It's a yes. It's going to work out. It's going to bring you happiness. Um, don't hesitate. There's no need to drag this on. And be gentle with your communication, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that you have to allow somebody to beat up on you. But realize that Five of Cups, there's a deep wound there. So it might take this person a little time to heal and warm up. Persistence will probably pay off. Um, and the bottom of the deck is my Hermit card. And this is usually, it indicates to me that you're on the right path. You're getting the right idea. You're receiving intuitive hits. You're receiving messages from spirit. And they're guiding you. So um, if your mind is questioning it, put that away. If your ego is questioning it, telling you 
you're not going to be safe. You're just going to, you're going to look like a fool. Please don't listen to that. Please don't listen to your gut, feel what it is in your stomach, in your heart. Um, pay attention to your dreams because that's where your answers are. That's what's going to guide you in the right direction. All right, Taurus. Um, I will be back next week with the pick a pile reading and then I'll be doing your October readings already. Oh my goodness. Um, I do hope that you guys have a really wonderful end of September and I will be talking to you soon. I send you lots of love. Take care.